Okay, so we're going to go over the first 18 questions, which is the first page front and back for the review. <coughs> so now, on number one, the cost of attending the fair is $10 for admission and $2 for each ticket for rides. Which equation represents this situation? So we have $10 for admission, so that's going to be the cost to get in. So that price isn't going to change no matter what. Then you have $2 for each ticket or per ticket. So that's telling us we're going to have to multiply that 2 by the price per ticket. So 2 times T. So we're going to have to do that 2 times T plus the original $10. So the only equation that correctly represents 2 with T plus the $10 would be B. And that will give us our total cost of going to the fair. Now. Uh, number two, uh, it says we have a meal card for a student cafeteria at a college with a starting balance of 400 Each meal costs $5. Let B represent the balance of the meal card in dollars and M represent the number of meals purchased. Which equation represents, represents the situation? So the 400 that's our starting value. So that would be like our y-intercept. So we have a positive 400 So the only two that have positive 400 are B and C. So it's definitely not A, it's definitely not D. And then it's $5 per meal, so that's what we're going to be subtracting from the total balance. So the only one that's subtracting that is C. So we got C as the correct answer. Now remember, the exam is all multiple choice. So use good test taking skills, like crossing off options as you go, in order to help eliminate possibilities. Now. It is, now I say that well, as you do it, again, you don't actually want to physically mark it on the paper because it is an exam and they are brand new test booklets. So don't actually mark in the book. So cross them off in your head or if you need to list them out on your scratch paper, you can. Um, you will have your Scantron, which you can write all over a scratch paper. And if you need extra scratch paper, you can ask me for scratch paper as well. Um, if you have a hard time um, with one of the questions and finding the final answer, but you're able to cross a few things off, I recommend writing down a scratch paper. Remember this, I narrowed it down to these two answers. Come back to it at the end. Right? Again, use good test taking strategies there. All right, on number three. Gordon wants to ride a taxi. He has $25. The taxi service charge is an initial fee of $5 and $2 for each mile the customer rides in the car. What is the maximum number of miles that Gordon can travel in the car? Well, if he has $25, $25 minus, no, you could write an equation here. I'm not going to write it out as a full equation. Um, but we have the 25. Get rid of that initial fee of $5. That leaves us with $20. For that $20, we can then take that and divide it by $2 for each mile. So divide that by $2, you're left with 10, and that'd be the number of miles he can travel. Now, could you set this up as an equation? Yes. Would it be doing the exact same work? Yes. So if you want to write it as an equation, you're more than welcome to. An example of an equation you could have written here in order to solve it would be 25 equals, this pen's dying on me. Try this one. 25 equals um, the flat rate of $5 plus $2 per mile. Oh, my pens are dying. Let's see if I can finish right now. All right. So, and it's the same work. You subtract off the 5, subtract off the 5. You end up with 20. Divide by 2. And M is 10. So again, whether you want to reason it out like I did the first time, or write an equation, they both get you the same answer. All right, so again, there is more than one way to do these problems. All right, on number 4. Maria has $50 deducted from her paycheck 
with her retirement account. She earns $12 per hour. Her paycheck this week was $370. How many hours did Maria work? So, if we write this as an equation, we have $370 is what she's getting. She worked an unknown amount of hours, but she's getting paid $12 per hour. But from that money that she's getting paid $12 an hour for, she's getting $50 taken out. So minus 50. So I set this up as an equation. So if we add $50 back to that, so bring the 50 over through addition, that give us 420. And then divide that by 12. And that would be 35. Perfect. Yeah. So you could do it by guessing and checking, plugging into your equation. So if you set up an equation or if you just did it based on the information of the problem and guess and check with each one, that's fine. Again, that's a good test taking strategy, right? So like I said, it's all multiple choice. Use those types of skills to find the correct answer. So if you aren't quite sure how to do it by setting up an equation, then use the answer choices to help you out. So that's a good way of doing it. Thank you. All right, on number five. And Bear has been keeping track of her water usage at home. The percentage is are recorded in the pie graph below. And Bear consumes 2,000 gallons of water last month. So this is her breakdown. How many gallons of water were wasted on leaks? So here it says 13.7. So this is leaks. 13.7%. So all we're doing is taking that 2,000 and multiplying it by 13.7%. That's all we're doing on this one. So 2,000 times 13.7%. Is there a percent key on this calculator? Yeah. It would be 274. Let's see. Now, if you don't have a percent key on your calculator, then what would you have to do with this decimal before you multiplied? So again, multiplying by a percent, that'd be the same thing as multiplying by a decimal when you move it over two decimal places. So we could have also said 2,000 times 0.137. Either, those ans either way, it gives you that same answer though. All right, uh, number six, Bradford bought a laptop computer regularly priced at $600. It was on sale for 20% off the regular price. What was the sale price of the laptop? So if it's 20% off, how much is he actually paying from the original price? Is he paying 20%? No, he's paying what's left over. What's left over? 80%. So hit the price he's paying is 80% of the original. So that times 80%. Or again, you could do it as 0 0.80. So 600 times 0.8 is 480. Now, if you had multiplied by 20%, is that answer also there? Yeah. All right, that was the answer choice A. So you have to be careful. Remember, if it's on sale and it's saying that it's 20% off, you're not paying that 20%. That's what you're getting off. So if you do do it by multiplying by 20, you'd have to then remember to subtract that number off the original price. So if you did 600 times 20%, you get 120, and then that's what you're getting 
off, so you could subtract that from 600, and you'd be left with 480. Again, either way works. On number seven. Man, they got a wide variety of names here, huh? Um, Condoleezza drove 6,100 miles this year. That is a 15% increase over the number of miles she drove last year. How many miles did she drive last year? So, there's a few different ways that you can set this up. All right. We could take the number of miles she drove last year times, it was an increase of 15%. So that'd be 115% of what she drove last year and say that that's equal to that new total. So we could set up an equation like this. If you did that, we'd just be dividing off the um, 115%, which would be 16 divided by the 14,000 miles. Now, I'm just guessing some of you guys did it that way. The way that I would normally do this problem is by setting up a proportion, all right? Which is essentially going to give you the same math in the long run. So, X was 115% of the original Sorry, sorry, I, I said that wrong. The 6,000, 16,100 was 115% of the original. Over here, we're trying to find the number of original miles, and that would have been the out of 100%. Now, you don't really have to worry about the percent signs because you got percent on both of those. So, if you just want to do it as 115 and 100, that's fine. Cross multiply, you get the exact same equation once you cross multiply though. So this times this gives you that, this times this gives you this. Divide off the 115 and you'd have your answer. So again. On number eight. Gustavo purchased C pounds of cherries at a rate of $4 per pound and G pounds of grapes at a rate of $2 per pound. Which expression represents the total amount Gustavo spent? So, guys, hey, Gus. So we have $4 per pound of grapes, oh, no, sorry, no, per pound of cherries, so four dollars times C, again anytime it says per, we're multiplying, and two dollars per pound of grapes. So we're doing four C and two G, and we'd have to add together that cost. So D would be our correct setup. Okay. Number nine. Cecilia rides her bike for 20 minutes at a rate of 15 miles on miles per hour on Monday. On Tuesday, she swims for 40 minutes at a rate of 3 miles per hour. What, what is the combined distance of riding and swimming? Now, they give you the formula for distance based off of rate and time. So, the two things that they gave you each part there. The part that's tricky here is they did this in miles per hour. 20 minutes is not in hours, so we'd have to convert that to hours. So how many minutes are in an hour? 60. So this 20 minutes would be 60 minutes out of an hour or one third of an hour. This 40, 40 out of 60 would reduce to two thirds of an hour. So in order to do this problem, I'm using one third and two thirds. So for the first part of this, distance equals the rate, which was 15, times 
one third. Well, 15 times one third, that'd be five. Because again, you multiply to the top, divide by the bottom, because that leaves us with five. And then for the other one, we were swimming at a rate of three miles per hour, and that was for two thirds of an hour. So three times two is six, six divided by three is two. So we did a total of five miles biking and two miles swimming for a total of seven miles. All right. All right, number 10, which system of equations represents the situation below? Karen purchased eight drinks for her family at the movie theater. Some drinks were large and some were small. The large drinks cost $5, while the small drinks cost $3. The total cost of drinks was $30. So, we know that she bought a total of eight drinks. And that was the number of small drinks plus the number of large drinks. So, looking at which one has that correct equation, all right, this is L times S equals 30. That's not what happened. We need L plus S equals 8. So, there's two options that have the correct first equation. Number of large plus the number of small equals 8. Number of large plus the number of small equals 8. So, that was for the first half of this. The second half told us the cost of the drinks. So, the large drinks are $5 each, so 5 times L. The small were $3 each, so 3 times S. And it gave us a total of 30. So, the correct second equation, well, there's only one thing here that has the correct second equation, and that's D. So, D is our correct answer. All right, number 11, same type of thing. Which system of linear equations represents the situation below? Aurora is in a biathlon in which she swims in a river and rows a kayak. She swims at a rate of 5 miles per hour and rows at a rate of 15 miles per hour. She hopes to complete the course, both swimming and rowing, in at most one hour. The course is at least 9 miles long. So, says, let's see. Uh, she swims at a rate of 5 miles per hour, rate of 15 miles per hour. So we know that the rate she's swimming at, 5 miles per hour, 15 miles per hour, and we want her to complete at most one hour. And rowing. Where does it say? Oh, and the course is at least nine miles long. That's the part I was missing. All right. So we know that the distance that she swims plus the distance that she rows has to be at least nine miles long. So at least. It's not saying equal to, it's saying at least. So this number could be more than nine miles or equal to. So first, let's look through the options and see if we can narrow it down just with this one. Well, this one almost looks correct, except it has the wrong inequality symbol. So that one's out. This one has the correct inequality symbol. This one has the correct inequality symbol, but the wrong number that we're saying it equal to. So that one's out. This one also has a wrong number that we're saying it equal to. So we don't even have to figure out the second part of this equation. B is the only one with the correct first equation. The With the number of miles for swimming and the number of miles for rowing together, 
has to be greater than or equal to nine miles. So we don't even have to do the second half. Again, sometimes, sometimes you'll be able to go through and look at your answers and be able to pick one just based off of one of the equations. Not all the time. On this one, and there's enough information there to narrow it down without even doing the second half of the problem. Okay. On number 12, what is the solution of the equation below? So we have, when we're solving for x, first thing we need to do is bring the 23 across. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this so that I can show my work. So first, we're going to add 23. You minus. Oh, sorry, minus, thank you. Minus 23. Thank you for catching that. So, negative 5 minus 23 is negative 28. Now, divide by negative 4. And you get a positive 7. So the answer is D. On number 13. Now, there's a lot of fractions in this one. I highly recommend trying to eliminate these fractions before you do a lot of the other math. So, I, I could distribute this right now. And if you want to, that's fine. Either way, we're going to have to deal with the fractions at some point. I would guess that most of you guys probably tried to distribute this first. Is that what most of you guys did for your first step? Yeah? Alright. So, let's go ahead and do that. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So we got 6 minus 3 halves times negative x is negative 3 halves x. Over here, nothing's changed yet. Now, I want to get rid of my fractions. So, I need to multiply everything over here and over here by that 2 to get rid of this fraction. So that 2 is going to everything to get rid of this fraction. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times this will cancel off the 2 on the bottom, so it just leaves us with 3x. 2 times 2 is 4, so we have 4 fifths x. And 2 times 4 is 8. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the 5. So I'm going to multiply everything and the entire thing by 5 on both sides. So we got 5 times 12 is 60. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4 fifths. Again, it'll cancel out the bottom, so it's just 4x. And 8 times 5 is 40. Now we can go ahead and combine like values. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the 15 over to this side by adding 15x. I'm going to bring the 40 over that way by subtracting the 40. So over here, these will cancel out. I'm left with 20 equals 19x. Final step, divide off the 19. And that would give me a decimal, but look at all the answer choices. Do I have to go anywhere further than this? No. All the answer choices are fractions. So D would be our correct answer. <coughs> now, is that the only way to do that problem? No. But again, if you don't want to deal with the fractions, you can get rid of them. All right, uh, number 14. What is the solution of the inequality below? So, when we deal with an inequality in solving, remember, all the steps are the same as solving any equation, except when you divide or multiply by a negative, you get to switch the sign. So, on this one, I'm just rewriting it first. I haven't changed anything yet. 
I prefer getting rid of the fraction right away. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So here, 2 times 9 is 18. So now it'll just be 3x. And this side will be negative 12. Get the 18 over to the other side by subtracting it. So negative 3x is less than negative 30. And finally, divide by negative 3. So x is greater than, because we're flipping the sign since we're dividing by a negative, positive 10. So our correct answer is D. Alright, I'm on 15. If 5x plus 3y is equal to 15, then which equation below is true? Now, looking at all these equations, they all changed these into slope-intercept form. They solved for y. They got y by itself. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get y by itself. So the first thing that I can do to get y by itself, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this 15 by bringing it to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and add positive 15. So that's 5x plus 15 equals 3y. Then I got to get rid of the 3. Divide by 3. Here, 5 divided by 3 is just going to be 5 thirds. X. 15 divided by 3 is going to be 5. And now Y is by itself. Now, these equations are flipped, but that's fine. It's the same thing. So which one gives me this same outcome? And that is D. Alright, on 16, if y minus 2 is equal to 3 times parentheses x plus 1, then which of the following equations is true? Again, look at what they did here. They just set them all equal to y. So I'm going to do the same thing. First, let me rewrite my equation. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute this 3 to both of those. 3x plus 3. Now I need to get 2 over to the other side by adding it. So plus 2, plus 2. Y equals 3x plus 5, which is, again, D. Man, they really like D on this side of the paper, huh? Hmm. Hmm. On number 17, if... 3x minus 4y is greater than negative 24, then which of the following inequalities is true? Again, nothing different than the last two problems. They're trying to get you to set y equal on one side of the equation. Now, this is an inequality, so if you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip your sign. So, first thing to get y by itself, get rid of the 3x. So let me first rewrite this equation. And get rid of the 3x by subtracting. Gives us negative 4y is greater than negative 3x minus 24. Then we got to get rid of the negative 4 by dividing by negative 4. So those cancel out. Gives us y. Wait, should it still be greater than? Should it still be greater than? No. Because we divide by a negative. So we got to flip our sign. So now it's less than. Negative 3 divided by negative 4 is going to be positive 3 fourths. Because they both had a negative, so now it's positive. So positive 3 fourths x. And negative 24 divided by negative 4 is now positive 6. So, which one is the correct answer it looks like C is the correct answer All right, and finally 18 
last one from this first part of the assignment. So, what is the value of x in the system below? Well, in order to solve this system, the easiest method here would be substitution because this bottom one is already set equal to y. So, take the top equation, plug the bottom equation in for y, which was just a negative 4. And now solve for x. So 3x plus 8 equals 11. Subtract off the 8. Leaves you with 3. Divide by 3 and x is 1. I didn't show all my steps there. Again, I had said, first thing I did was subtract 8, and then I divided by 3 to get that 1. And that was it. So that's the whole first page. Again, tomorrow at the beginning of class, I'm going to check off the second page. So anytime that's left in class, now you can work on that second one. Yes. Sir, can you help me? Yes.